What is going on guys welcome back to another video I have been an amazing day to this video where we are taking a look at something special so this is one year 3.1 update for the Galaxy S20 FE but something special about this is this is a 5G model so it's based on the Snapdragon 865 SoC which is not meant for sale in India I actually acquired this device so yeah this is quite a special one and this firmware does actually have few issues so as if right now I'm making this video, the update has been pulled off because it has some encryption issues as per to me. I wasn't able to run bunch of the games like even the Antutu benchmark. I just wanted to test some games how it runs on Snapdragon 865 with this beautiful 120Hz panel because personally my Note 20 Ultra has Exynos as I'm in India but sadly no luck. I wasn't able to get most of the games running like even Fortnite on 30 FPS, epic settings and it holds quite well but the Snapdragon 865 does actually hit quite a bit. Well, I originally got this phone on the One UI 2.5 and then upgraded to the 3.0 as it wasn't receiving OTS because it's not meant to be registered on Indian networks. Then I upgraded manually to a 3.1 German firmware. So this is completely DBT firmware. And now if you just go to the left, there is no Google Now. So I don't think Google Now is coming to the last gen devices as it doesn't have the deeper Google integration like no Google Messenger or Google Duo integrations into the phone app. So yeah, you just get Samsung free, which is a bit different version from the Bixby Home or Samsung Daily. Then again, you can even play quick games, which is quite nice to be honest. Then again, you can read latest news just like before. I hope you can turn this into a dark mode because it looks really odd coming from the dark Samsung daily. But now going through more apps and stuff, as you can see, it does have places options as this is based on the Germany firmware. It's much more easier to contact businesses there, but there is no Google Duo integration right over here for making default video calls. I hope that would be coming to the Indian firmware or more global regions. But now if you even go to the settings, call backgrounds, there are no more options just like the S21 series. Then again, going to the gallery app, there are quite a few changes right over here. Just little optimizations, but it still has those ugly gaps from the S21. So again, over here, you can view images and share them with removing the location data. So this is really nice, something that we previously saw onto MIUI. But yeah, you can directly remove the location data, which is really nice. Then again, coming back, even it has the latest eraser from the S21, but it doesn't really work that great, to be honest. For example, this beach image, you can just daily go to the edit, go to labs and enable this object eraser right over there. And it comes just like a normal feature. Now you can zoom in and out, tap to select images. Like you can't actually draw like a Snapseed or Pixar, but yeah, you can just tap object and erase it. And it's quite crap to be honest. It doesn't work that great as like a Samsung demo. Like it doesn't even select the object that well like it's really bad i tried with multiple images and just not consistent performance so yeah that's pretty much it for the gallery app there are still many more under the hood changes for the codex but daily going down to the device info cpu snapdragon 865 and trust me, this phone is so snappy. I'm kind of jealous that my Note 20 Ultra, which costs more than twice this phone, has a Exynos chip. And it's quite a laggy experience, to be honest. Like, this phone is just so far smoother than my Note 20 Ultra. Like, especially on my Note 20, whenever I pull up the S Pen and try to do this, it's extremely laggy. It's like in 40 FPS for the Note 20 Ultra. Or even in the app menu, where there is already blur and you are trying to overdraw another blur on it. Sorry, there you go. It's so smooth, like the Snapdragon experience especially with 1080p 120Hz, like it's so smooth. And again, these non-LTPO panels are just far more smoother in terms of touch latency. Again, there were many complaints with the S20 FE and its touch latency, but I haven't been experiencing anything. Like it's actually much smoother than the LTPO screen on my Note 20 Ultra. I also checked the G781V, which is a proper American model, and it had quite a wonky touch lag, but over here in this model, there is just pretty much nothing. So did go into the camera app and I really hope this is not a normal issue and just defect in my unit. But going to the wide angle lenses, there are real weird artifacts which were there onto the One UI 2.5 and even the One UI 3.1. So it's still not resolved. If it's a normal issue, please let me know in the comment section below. If it happens with your S20 FE based on the 4G Exynos model, but there are these weird lines which also come into the pics. It's just not a post-processing error. But switching between lenses is just far more smoother than before, especially in video. If you are trying to zoom in from the ultra wide lens, it's just far more smoother. But going down to the camera app, single take, yeah, this is the single take 2.0. And you do get this quick options right over here, which you can select or unselect. Going to the video, you have quick option for resolutions. You can't switch between lenses in FHD 60 FPS. 
that's for the higher bandwidth models like the S21 Ultra or even to the USD 60FS. Like I'm quite impressed how good this phone is at around 40 to 50K compared to the OnePlus 8T. Like in terms of smoothness and performance, like even if you come to the front camera, even the front camera supports USD 60FPS in this price range. I thought this is only for the ultra high end models like S20 or the Note 20, but look at that. And the front camera on this phone is just far more better even than my Note 20 Ultra's autofocus cause again, this is a fixed focus camera and it works far better than another flagship phones to be honest. Like I'm quite jealous I bought a Note 20 Ultra. I just wanted a Snapdragon S20 FE, that's it. But yeah, you can still switch between lenses in Full HD and that also means you do not have director mode in this phone. So I guess it won't be even coming to the Note 20 series. Then the live focus mode has been renamed to portrait mode, which is a bit more normalized version, I guess. But there are no extra effects like the S21. I guess it has more monochrome effects. And then again, going to the more, there's just pretty much nothing. AR total seems to be a bit updated and it does actually work quite fine without the TOF sensor like the S20 plus. But let's just come back. That's it for the camera. Going through more apps, there's just pretty much nothing. There are much more continuation optimizations done to the Samsung nodes and the internet. But the third party support for the apps like Google Messenger or Duo is not present over here, at least for the devices which are not released in 2021. So the Google Duo's auto framing feature is not present, I guess. Then again, directly going down to the settings app. Again, very smooth. I guess this is not a UFS 3.1 that's why it feels a little slower than the Note 20 Ultra to open the apps like the Instagram opens far more faster on my Note 20 Ultra but the overall smoothness of the phone is just not even near to the Exynos models like this is just far more smoother I can tell at least this panel is just far more better but going down to sounds and vibration now you can scroll down you have call and notification vibrations completely different then again you have call vibrations over here which were only three I guess before for the devices which supported then again, going down, you have display, which also has completely maxed out brightness. That's cause I'm using OLED server to avoid flickering in the camera. That's normal, but you have eye comfort shield from the S21 series. And basically it's a advanced blue light filter. And I really want this on my tablet cause what it does is if you set it on adaptive, it will optimize the colors of the overall screen. If there's more blue, it will just minimize the blue light, which is really nice to fall asleep. I really want this on my tablet. So directly coming back, you have themes and even the home screen settings right over here as S21 has much more features for that, but there's just pretty much nothing. Yeah. Scrolling down, lock screen, nothing. Even if you go to the biometrics and security, now you have private share and Samsung blockchain key store. This is really nice if you have any kind of cryptocurrency or just want to store any kind of another crypto stuff. I don't have a huge info on it, but you also have private share, which will need a SIM, which won't activate in India, but basically, Here's the info on that. You can privately share and have much more control over the things that you share, which is really weird, but I hope it works all over the Samsung account. Then again, going down, you have advanced features in that all the settings have been now rearranged over here from connection like the Android Auto. Then again, you have continue apps on another devices if you have a Samsung Fold or even a tablet. So that's really nice. But currently it only has support for Samsung internet and notes, which is really minimal, but you also have call and text on other devices, which is really helpful. And then there is no video call effects, just like the S21 series. So yeah, there is no support for Zoom, Meet or Google Duo for background blur, color or image, which is really advanced, but sad to see no traces of that over here. Maybe it needs a autofocus camera for depth measurement. And yeah, I guess that's pretty much it for the One UI 3.1 upgrade, quite a minimal list, but Pretty quality features like even if you now go to the clock, there are just small little updates over here and there. Like now there's set bedtime. So yeah, there is a really nice integration of that with really nice UI to be honest with digital well-being. So you can activate bedtime mode or even wake up alarms right over here. Done. There you go. And yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. Again, huge thanks to Samsung Smart Cafe in Alibaba for providing me this unit. Like it's really special to have a Snapdragon S20 FE in India. And if you want to check out this specific phone, again, address is in the description. They will guide you regarding any kind of Samsung queries that you have, or even if you want to check out the latest S21 Ultra, it's right there. And see you guys in the next one. Peace. Do like and share or even subscribe. That really helps.